Transferring wealth successfully starts with asking yourself questions that will give your family a better life now and for generations to come. In this podcast, financial professionals John and Michael from Copper Beach Financial Group guide you through eye-opening questions to help you discover the truth about your wealth. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to The Truth About Wealth with John and Michael Priest of Copper Beach Financial Group. Today I'm excited I get to introduce the guest for today. That is Michael R. Harris. He's a CFP, a CLU, a CHFC, and I'm going to have him explain those in a minute. Uh, and he is a Senior Education Advisor for the Alliance for Lifetime Income, a nonprofit organization founded to help Americans address the risk of outliving their retirement income. For almost 30 years, he worked as a senior executive in the life insurance industry collaborating closely with financial advisors, insurance agents, CPAs, attorneys, and their clients to help design financial strategies and solutions for the new American retirement. Michael and John, how are you this morning? Doing great, Eric. How are you? Doing, doing wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I love this Living bio. the dream, it's, as we say. There you go, right? I mean, that's, that's all we can hope for. Um, th- this bio is, is fantastic. And, and Mr. Harris, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. No, it's a pleasure. I'm enjoying it. All right. And, and just for my own sake, because I could get confused, do you mind if I call you Mike? No, you can call me Mike. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So you, John and Michael, you brought Mike on the show. Why did you guys bring him on the show today? Well, th- thanks again, Mike, for coming on. We, we brought Mike on today to really discuss, as, as you mentioned, Eric, he is with the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what we're going to talk about today is income planning and, and more specifically, the uh, annuity product and how that can be helpful for income planning. And so I think, and Mike, I'm sure we'll get into this. If there's probably there probably isn't a more polarizing topic in the financial world than than annuities. So we wanted to have this podcast to really hopefully educate our audience on, you know, what they are, what role they take in income planning, and some of the maybe more creative um, ways that we can utilize them. So that's why we brought uh, Mike on today. So. Uh, Mike, maybe we could start off with perhaps maybe uh, the, the most simple question, but perhaps one that I think maybe even gets lost in the shuffle, so to speak. And, and really, that is, what is an annuity? How would you define an annuity if you were explaining that to an investor? Well, it's, you know, an annuity is really simply this. It's, a, it's an income stream you can't outlive. That's basically what an annuity was really created to do. And you, you talk to consumers and you say, or clients and investors, you say, do you know when an annuity, when the first annuity was ever created? And you know, most of them don't know, but that they were created, there was a thing called an annua prior, probably about seven or 800 BC. And what it was, was the government would pay people just like a, a stipend every year, an income stream every year for their entire life. If they did something, they won an event or they, the Olympics, they used them as a reward in the Olympics. So it's really an income stream. Now, they've changed a lot over the years as far as, you know, what you can do with them and things like tax deferral and investments and grow your assets. But really, an annuity is meant to do one thing, and that's create an income stream that cannot be outlived. That's it. It's that simple. Yeah, and and a lot of a lot of times, you know, people really you can think about social security as being an annuity or a, mm-hmm. a pension uh, that you may have from a company that you worked for. All of those are sort of varying to varying degrees in annuity, correct? Correct. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just a it's an income stream that comes in on a regular basis that no matter how long you live, if you're one of those lucky people that lived 105, 110 and, you know, people are living longer, that income stream will always be there. Now, there's just the like you said, Social Security and pensions, but there's also with a commercial annuity, the ability to create your own kind of a personal pension plan that you would get to control and decide how, you know, how much you want to put into it, what kind of income you want out of it when you start it. But it is, again, an income stream. That's, that's what an annuity really boils down to in the simplest form. All right. Well, the next question that, that I had, and you just touched on it there in, in your last statement, is people are living longer. So can you walk the audience through why uh, these these sort of incomes that you cannot outlive are very important when it comes to income planning, which is what we're really going to be talking about today. Sure, I mean that's the that's a that's a big nut there. You know, it's bigger. That whole thing topic is bigger in a bread box. But when you stop to think about life expectancies 
average life expectancy for a, a male uh, age 65 is probably around 82, 83 years old, right? And you hear people talk about life expectancy, but you have to realize from a, from a statistical standpoint, only about 4% of people die at life expectancy. So that leaves 96% of the, the rest of us that some are going to die earlier than that, some are going to die later than, than life expectancy. Issue, that I guess the, the real f crux of the issue is, we don't know when that's going to be. We don't know what our checkout date's going to be. So what the idea, is, if with an annuity, is if you don't know when you're going to die or, or when you're going to you know, move off this earth, you need to plan for living a longer life. And if you look at statistics again, just, just studies, if you're a couple age 65, there's a 50% chance that one of you is going to be alive to age 92. So we need to protect for that. We need to plan for living longer than what we would expect. And, and if we don't, we just, you know, I just hate to think of those consequences because what that means is your lifestyle has to be adjusted. And that's not always the easiest or the most pleasant thing to do, to give up something, give up the, the, the you know, travel or, or the things you do with your kids or your grandkids. You got to plan for it because... It's happening and life expectancies are, are moving out and we're living longer. Yeah. I mean, we hear that all the time and it's, it's, I mean, uh, you know, as I said at the beginning, these, if you just, you probably just turn on the TV, you'll hear a, a lot of um, really negative comments about annuities. And you know, I'm sure we could touch on why that might be the case. Or uh, I, I always look at, an annuity and and dad actually I learned this this from you as a, almost a way of insuring your income and if you think about it right. we insure everything else in our in our life we insure our house we insure our cars we insure our lives um, mm -hmm. to protect against an in a premature passing an annuity is the way I look at it and and obviously I, you do the same dad because you taught me this is, is it, annuity is really insuring your income and because you cannot outlive it. So I think it's an mm -hmm. important component when you, when you talk about planning and, and, you know, not looking at this type of product as being in a, in a vacuum, but it can really fill an important role really to give families a peace of mind um, that they're protected there in the event mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, they're fortunate enough to <laughs> outlive that life expectancy number that you mentioned uh, a little earlier, Mike. So that's, I think, oh, a way absolutely. that we've we've looked at these types of products as filling a role. You know, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. Every every tool yeah. has a, a purpose. Right. As a as a planner, uh, which I've been my entire career, like you said, you know, we have life insurance, you have long term care insurance, you have homeowners insurance, well, life insurance on the financial side insures you against dying too young taking care of your family and long-term care insurance, you know, that ensures it gets a catastrophic event. If, you know, if, if that's something you want to plan for, uh, you know, disability insurance was one, you know, in case you get hurt at work while you're working and then light uh, annuities plan for living long and living a great full life. That's what it's all about being able to leave that full life in retirement and not have to worry about it. I mean, my mother was one of those people that, was not a well person, you know, what you would call a well person, had a few illnesses and things that were, you know, kind of chronic. Nobody ever thought she'd lived to 70 years old. She lived to 94. You know, you God just don't him. know, and you got to plan for that. Yeah, the other analogy I, I like to use with, with clients as, as well is to, it's like, it's like taking your car over, over a bridge that's over this huge gully, and mm -hmm. the bridge has no guardrails. What's, mm -hmm. your, what's your fear factor? versus a bridge right. having guardrails. So I would rather go over a bridge with my kids in the back seat with guardrails. And I think that's how I, I relate to the annuity structure. There's certain mm -hmm. guarantees that are built into the chassis that protects you and the family. And I, I, I like that as, as well. Well, that's the, maybe Absolutely. a good segue into, into maybe the next um, topic, Mike, is you mentioned that the guarantees that are involved in some of these products. Can you walk through the, uh, the sort of and there's a lot of different ones, as I'm sure you're aware. But can you walk our audience through maybe sort of the key concepts or key guarantees or features of some of these contracts that are out there in the marketplace? Well, uh, yeah, I think if you really stop to think about a contract, somebody that's coming in, let's say, at age 50 and saying, you know, as we're doing planning, part of the solution set 
for long-term retirement planning, a slice, remember, that everything is only for a slice of a diversified portfolio. But when we think about how do we add protection into it, maybe at 50 years old, you'd be buying an annuity. Well, there are, there are opportunities for you to, to put money in and maybe make additional contributions. One of the advantages there is that the money is growing tax deferred. That's a great thing. If you can avoid paying taxes on money as it grows, here, it here. gives you a leg up, it, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, huge thing. You also get the compounding effect. I call them the eighth and ninth wonder of the world. Uh, and the protections that you could have there would be maybe like we call it a family benefit or a beneficiary benefit. So you put in $100,000, just for an example, and something goes wrong in a few years, the market's gone down and you, maybe there's a little less in there than what you started with and you pass away. Well, it, it, those kind of contracts would, would basically fill that contract back up to your original uh, starting amount to pass on your family. So the idea there is you can't get back less in the event of death than what you put in minus what you took out. So that's just some ancillary protections that you get going on. But when you get to the income side, there's a lot of different, we call them uh, optional benefits or optional income benefits that you can buy. And what's great about them is they are a benefit. They provide you with this guaranteed income and they're optional. You can take them, you can leave them. Uh, you can design it kind of, I used to call it the Mr. Potato Head kind of a thing. You know, some of them you could put, add one, take one off. You can't change them a lot once you get started, but there's different contracts. You can find one that fits what you want to do. And what they would be is there's a different, um, range of ways you could get the income out of it. What we call traditional annuitization is the way we started years ago. That's all you know. You, that's all you had if you really wanted to maximize your income. And that gets you the maximum amount of income out of the, the, the money that's been put in and when you're ready to start taking income. There's the, the, the drawback to that, or some people feel it's a drawback, is that when you do that, you're actually buying that pension plan. You're turning your money, converting your asset into an income stream, just like a social security you mentioned or a pension. The asset is, is gone now. You don't have that money, but you got the income stream. It could last for your life, maybe your, your life and your spouse's life. We could even do multi-generational family planning with it, but that's how you get the maximum income. Now, over the last 20 years, recent developments come out what we call living benefits or, or, or living income benefits, withdrawal benefits that would st stipulate that at some point in time, you get, there's an income number, you put in $100,000 again, let's say you're ready to start taking income, that you would get a set percentage of that asset every year for the rest of your life. And you can take those monthly or quarterly or annual, but let's say an example, let's say 5%. Somebody says, okay, I put in 100,000. I'm going to start taking income. I'm guaranteed that 5%. Well, right off the bat, you're going to start at $5,000 a year. That would be your income. Like I said, you take it monthly. It can never go below that. Now, unless you reach in and pull out extra money, then it would drop. But, but the idea with those right types of benefits is you don't give up control of your asset. There's whatever's left if you were to die, passes on to your family or wherever you wanted to go, church, school, charity. So there's different ways and methods to get that income without having, you know, uh, having to sacrifice, or, or I don't even like the word sacrifice so much, but lose control or give up control, relinquish control of the asset to get the maximum amount of income. There's ways to take a little less income, but still control your asset. So what we'd say, that's why I was mentioning that's why individuals should seek out help from a financial professional because that's what you all do is keep an eye out there, watch what's going on, new trends, new products, um, you know, and what type of product fits the, the individual's type of scenario and what, what's important to them. That's what it's all about is helping that client, again, find what's important, feel safe and secure, be optimistic about the future, have the best outcome and lead a full life. That's what... That's what we do. Yeah, when, and when you look at the other side of it, too, you just mentioned 5%. If you look at the uh, environment we live in today, rates are so low, they're the lowest they've oh. been in history. To get 5% mm -hmm. from another asset class is virtually impossible. So the annuities, mm -hmm. from my standpoint as a financial advisor, when I talk about guarantees, 
There's not mm -hmm. many places you can get a guaranteed five or even six percent uh, contractually for your lifetime from these asset right. structures. And, and that's right. a big piece of the pie that people miss sometimes, that where else can you go other than maybe get dividends from a stock portfolio, and they're averaging maybe 35 to 4%. So you, mm -hmm. you could do that in the stock portfolio, but, right. but you're gonna, still going to get more out of the annuity structure based on guarantees. And by the way, the dividends right. aren't guaranteed. This would be. So those are the conversations we often have with families. When you look right. at income guarantees, you have to look at the fact pattern of, in the world we live in today. Because if we're getting 8% sure. on bonds and you're guaranteeing 5% on annuity, it wouldn't be so attractive. You, you have another vehicle right. you could get more from. Absolutely. I, was, I just wanted to make sure I cleared that, that point up. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it would be easy for somebody to step in and say, you know, here's my, I always use 100,000 because it makes math easy. Here's my 100,000. If I just take 5% a year, $5,000 a year, it'll last me for 20 years. So I'm 70, it'll last me to 90. I'll never spend, you know, I'll never outlive it. Well, wait a minute. You may. What happens at 91 when the check, when, when you just pull out your last withdrawal, right? That's an issue. Sure. You know, yeah, I mean, all this that's is, what you got to plan for. Yeah, Mike, all this is is really good education. And again, I, I think that there's a lot of, unfortunately, misconception in the in the general populace on sort of what these products can do. But wh mm -hmm. why do you think that there is, in certain cases, an aversion in the general populace to to look at these vehicles um, as, a, as a solution to their income planning needs? Why do you think that exists? Well, uh, well, it's an interesting question, but one thing, the, the Alliance for Lifetime Income, everything we do is grounded in research. And we, we've done research uh, with consumers. And what we found was that uh, if you were to break, consume, uh, break the consumers, you do, do a survey of them, and then you break them into three categories, people that like annuities, they're very favorable to them, people that are neutral towards them, and people that don't like them. The don't like them was only about 14% of the people that we surveyed. So that means that there was a portion at the top, probably about 10% or 15%, I think it was, that really liked them. Now, a lot of those people owned it. But that left that movable middle. That's probably 70% of the people just don't know enough about them. It's not that they like them or dislike them. They just don't know about them. They don't understand them. They've never researched them. Uh, you know, annuity is not something that you just, you know, you don't buy it at the at a kiosk at the mall, you know, I mean, right. it's, it's a more complicated, it's like life insurance. You have to, you know, so most of the people that, that the aversion to it is not an aversion as much as it is just a misunderstanding and lack of knowledge. And then you've got the people at the bottom that don't like it because they just don't like it. And, and those are the voices you hear, you know, nobody, you don't see articles about, Oh, I don't understand annuities. You know, I, I just don't understand. It. You don't see it. What everybody, you know, bad news sells. Oh, I hate it, and my this happened, and you know, that becomes the issue. And then there's always that that component that you know somebody ran into some went to a meeting and bought something that wasn't probably a really a great product. Um, you know, that happens in everything, but that's really the the crux. I, I I don't want people walking away saying there's a lot nobody likes them. It's just they don't understand them. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it, and, and I think it's a, it, I think it's our industry. I don't mm -hmm. think we've done a good enough job from a planning standpoint. Um, we live in this selling a product environment uh, to to a certain mm -hmm. degree, and although that's that's a part of our business, which is I'm not saying it's negative, but when you don't have a plan around why you're doing something. Yeah. I think it causes that issue. I think when you when you have a conversation with a with a family that says, "Listen, we can take this." investment decision you're making and guarantee a structure that's going to protect you and your wife or uh, or your children depending if you do the generational component of it, it mm -hmm. it's it's enormous planning opportunity right. here at copper beach we have a hundred year models with our families so we manage three generations so sometimes the annuities fit those type of models so i think a plan is important around these structures it's not just right. you need to buy an annuity because it does x it's, that's not good enough sums. I think our industry mm. needs to be more plan oriented around around these annuities. And I, I, I might be not, not categorizing properly, but that's my take. I think a right. lot of people sell the annuity, not the benefit of the annuity and the planning around it and the impact it would have for a family uh, going right. forward. 
Oh, absolutely. I, I, I come from the same mindset here is that we solve, we provide solutions for a problem. If you're just providing a solu- a, a product, that doesn't necessarily solve us the, the, this looking for a solution or looking for a problem. We don't do that. We say, what are we trying to do? What, what do we need? What kind of products fit that? And that the benefits of those products meet those needs, solve those problems. And when you say planning, our research shows that only about 20% of the people that we've researched with and surveyed have any kind of plan in place, a real plan. Um, that's not a, that's not good enough. People need to start. And then there's another 30% say, well, I've got signed some kind of a plan, but I don't really follow it real close. You know, that's a mistake. If you don't have a plan, you have no, you have no way of telling whether you're getting to your final destination if you don't plan on how you're going to get there. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's very unfortunate. Um, I mean, we see it all the time in a variety of mm-hmm. contexts. Uh, uh, it, it is unfortunate, you know. And I and I think um, you know it's kind of staying with this uh, the annuity and why you know this un uh, through no fault of their own uneducated you know populace or, or investor out there that maybe doesn't really know even what to make of an annuity. I think that's um, mm-hmm. you know again to your point that I think maybe more of the advisor community you know, maybe a lack of, of an education, because I think that that is, you know, and again, as I mentioned earlier, th- these are tools. So there's certainly going to be, as you mentioned, Mike, that 10% that maybe just does, doesn't like annuities, and maybe it's not going to be a fit for them. And that's fine. But I think mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. through the exercise of and, and education of what they are, and what role they can take is, you know, our job as an advisor to be able to walk a client through that. And then if they decide that they don't want to go with that strategy, then that's fine. But at least they've uh, they've understood it. Hopefully, uh, uh, w- what role it takes, and I think that that's mm-hmm. um, you know m- maybe what I hope to kind of get across today. Yeah, and I, I, th- I think it boils down to how, how you approach the annuity discussion. And and getting back to fees, I, fees are relative to value. I always mm-hmm. I always challenge uh, my peers to say you know fees are irrelevant to value to a certain level. If you can show value of an asset or a structure or 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 or, or an investment strategy, it, it's it, fees are irre- irrelevant. They're not important to the equation because of the plan. Well, it's, uh, we have a um, a family member that has uh, invested some of his retirement savings into these annuity type structures with guarantees that provide him that guaranteed income for life. And I remember him uh, talking to one of his colleagues um, about the structure. And the colleague of his had mentioned about the fees and them being expensive. And I think you would agree, Mike, if you if you purchase all of these optional benefits, they they are more expensive than what you would probably be able to do in a traditional money management uh, relationship with an advisor or certainly mm-hmm. managing your money on your own. But my, mm-hmm. my our family member said, well, who cares about the fees? I'm getting a guaranteed income stream for the rest of my life. Uh, you right. charge me 10%. Now, I'm not saying that you <laughs> insurance companies should do that or you shouldn't have that or you should have that opinion about them, but you know, in from his perspective to your point that is that the fee is relative to the value that he was getting and for him, the value of this product was he doesn't have to wake up every day and worry about whether he's going to outlive his money. He's always going to get that check. Uh, in right. the mail on a monthly basis, and so for him that was fine, you know. And again, right. not every fit, not every client may have that same opinion, but and, it is and a, you a remember, good example of that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you got to re- you always have to take in the back of your mind as a consumer and as an advisor, saying you know it's only for a portion of a portfolio. We're, any nobody, I've never told me, oh, you need to put all your money into an annuity or all right. your money into this. It's a slice, and and if you really think about it from a planning perspective, we do a thing. We have a thing at the office called our income hierarchy uh, pyramid, and it just basically says the bottom of the pyramid is your want, is your needs, and those are your you know your clothes and shelter and food and housing, transportation, the things that you've got to have. That if you can fund those. You could survive, not going to be maybe the greatest life, but you'll survive. Then the next layer above those are your your wants. Those are the fun things. And then the very top becomes your wishes. And what we try to say is the 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 one the need section, the bottom peer, tier, needs to be protected. And that's where Social Security, pensions, and annuities fit. And then when you go into the want section, that's where all the other types of investments, the, the fun stuff. But 
fun stuff sometimes becomes we, we call it comfort creep. You know, I I have I I belong to a a, a golf club, and to me that's kind of like I got I I don't want to be without that. So I I adjust for that. I do my planning to account for that. It's just all part of the planning process. But that's where it fits, just for a slice, right? Yep, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, I think if anyone's listening to this, the the key takeaway from all this is really planning at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You have to do that planning up front to determine you know what your cash flow needs might be. Uh, because again, if you don't have that foundation in place, it's difficult really for any investment, whether it's an annuity or, or something else, to really know where, where you stand and what might be a fit. So I think mm-hmm. that's, uh, at the end of the day, what you have to do most of the time. Yeah, I've also presented this to, yeah, definitely in, in, in the past to, to clients that clients that have affluence really don't need annuities, but they buy them. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the lower end of the spectrum, people that retire on $100,000 out of their 401k plan, what's their risk? Because and I'll, I'll right. go back to the longevity risk. There's no other vehicle that I know of that you could take that $100,000 in an IRA structure, put it inside of an annuity, and guarantee an income stream for the rest of your life. Because their right. fears are going to run out. Because inflation goes up, and we think that's going to be something that we have to reckon with in, in, in the near future. So all these factors, and to Michael's point, you have to look at all the components to make the right decision. And if you're doing this in a, in a vacuum, you're going to run the risk of potentially thinking you made a mistake. And, and mm-hmm. you could have, depending on what you did. But, but mm-hmm. the planning around these issues and understanding all the fact patterns of what you have to be concerned about, these news become very attractive as a vehicle. For the, for the people that don't have that, affluence. So it's really mm-hmm. the opposite where, remember, IRAs were created. Most, most affluent people took advantage of IRAs. The lower end did not because they couldn't afford to. This is almost mm-hmm. reverse. This, is, this benefits mm-hmm. that, that, that in the, you know, individual that only had $100,000 put away for their lifetime. And they can right. now guarantee that structure for their lifetime. Uh, and they can't outlive that $100,000, which, which to me is, is a plan, is, is a very good one. Well, absolutely. I agree with that. You know, I mean, like you said, the, if you're a affluent or super affluent, you probably got enough cash flow off of your investments that you'd be exactly. fine. But I've sold a lot or position. I don't like to say sell. Once you describe the process, what it does, what solve the problem you're trying to solve, you don't have to, you're not trying to sell anything. It's just this is what works. And they say, yep, let's go. And you put and you position it inside the portfolio. But I've positioned annuities with people that were well past, you know, hundred, two hundred million dollars worth of, uh, and those are what I call super affluent. But the annuity was the right solution for the problem they had for a, in a particular situation. And we positioned the annuity and implemented it and it works great. Just like anything else. It's not about price. It's about what it does for you. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more. Well, Mike, I think we're uh, approaching a little bit of the end of our of our time here, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can get you back on, on this podcast because I, I, you know, we talked a lot about the general structure today, but you alluded mm-hmm. to, to a couple of r- pretty creative ways that um, you've used these products in, in sort of your, your career. And I'd like maybe mm-hmm. to have you on, if you're willing to come back on and really go through those, those planning opportunities a little bit more. If some you can case studies, yeah, some sure. case studies would be great. Oh, absolutely. That'd be fun. Yeah. I mean, some of the multi-generational planning and some of the issues we did with trust and special needs applications, there are some, there's a, it, it's, it's when you really start looking at the opportunities, I call it kind of the, the Swiss army knife of, uh, of, of planning a little bit, you know, it's just kind of tongue in cheek there, but it uh, it does have some applications where it really does work Sounds that you wouldn't lovely. think about. So yeah, love to. Excellent. Well, we're really excited about that, and thank you so much for yeah, thanks, Michael, for hopping on today. This is, I think, great. Hopefully, uh, the listeners uh, you've gleaned some useful information today. Hopefully, some clarity. But um, at the end of the day, it's about planning, as we've said, and so you know the, these these products and income planning in particular is a vital role in your overall generational financial plan and these annuity mm-hmm. products can be useful tools. So I want to make sure right. that gets Yeah, I'm excited about the next session because I, I think planning around these structures are, are huge. And you mentioned mm-hmm. special needs. I, I, I'm certified in that arena, and I do a lot of annuities and special needs trusts. So I'd love mm-hmm. to hear some of your comments on that. But sure. looking forward to, to having you back, and I think that's going to be the exciting uh, second half of this podcast. Yeah, no problem. That's the, that's the sizzle to the steak. 
<laughs> exactly. Thanks again, Mike. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Yeah, I love the way you put that, the sizzle to the steak. That's fantastic. Um, th- this is kind of almost a teaser for those that are listening right now. This next one's going to be full of meat. It's going to allow you to kind of put your <laughs> shoes in this situation. Uh, Mike's going to uh, do some case studies. I know, John, you've got a lot of experience that you're going to be talking about as well. And Michael, um, yeah, this is – I'm excited about that next podcast. But – I'm sure there are a few people that are like, hey, now, that's great, but I want to talk about it now. Um, Guys, how about you give some contact information so that they can reach out to you before that next podcast comes out if they choose? Sure. You can always reach us via uh, phone, which is area code 856-988-8300. Or you can reach us on our website, which is www.cbfgllc.com. Fantastic. Michael and John, thank you so much for bringing Mike on. And of course, Mike, thank you for being a great guest today. And of course, our last thank you goes to the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast with John and Michael Paris. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when John and Michael come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Copper Beach Financial Group, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Copper Beach Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This material is for informational purposes only. Neither APFS nor its representatives provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Please consult your own tax, legal, or accounting professional before making any decisions. Copper Beach is not affiliated with American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Securities offered through American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc., a member of FINRA SIPC, Investment Advisory and Financial Planning Services offered through American Portfolio Advisors, Inc., an SCC Registered Investment Advisor. These opinions are subject to change at any time without notice. Any comments or postings are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or a recommendation to buy or sell securities or other financial instruments. Readers should conduct their own review and exercise judgment prior to investing. Investments are not guaranteed, involve risk, and may result in a loss of principal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Investments are not suitable for all types of investors. Copper Beach is an unaffiliated entity of American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Any opinion expressed in this forum is not the opinions of American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolio Advisors, Inc. and have not been reviewed by the firm for completeness or accuracy. Guarantees apply to certain insurance and annuity products and are subject to product terms, exclusions, limitations, and the insurer's claims, paying ability, and financial strength. This is neither an offer to sell nor a solicitation of an offer to buy the securities described herein. Only the prospectus makes such an offer. This information must be read in conjunction with the prospectus in its entirety before investing for complete information and to learn more about the risks associated with this investment. The Alliance for Lifetime Income is a nonprofit consumer education organization whose mission is to help Americans understand the need for protected lifetime income from an annuity when planning for retirement. Alliance for Lifetime Income is not affiliated with American Portfolios nor Copper Beach.